Well, good morning. Good morning, everybody. It is great to have you with us it this is. morning. It's a, just a wonderful Sunday morning. We're it just is. So excited. It is oh, we're over there. We're over yeah. where? Hello. Hey, look, there we are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why yeah. are we over there? Uh, I don't know. I don't know either. The, ma- it's the okay. magic. The magic is while we're over there. Well, hey, everybody, we want to welcome you to First Christian Church. We're all about connecting our community to Christ and each other, and we're just thankful that you clicked the link, that you logged on, and that you're joining here with us today. So thank you for taking and carving out your Sunday morning for God and to be with family. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, how was your week, Zach? It was delightful. It really was. Did I? Yeah. This was the week that... I went home for a little bit. I was I was in Kansas. Got to see some baby goats. Those were pretty. Those are pretty cute. It's pretty great. Were they fainting baby goats? No, sadly. I did have a friend that had one of those fainting goats just because it was a fainting goat. And that was that was pretty interesting. Uh, you know, I'm not going to talk about how we. It was a cute goat. We we That's didn't good. torture it by making it faint all the time. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Who's too exciting? It's too great. I'm, I'm going to assume... Oh, there we are. Yeah, it's There's our faces. Delayed. It's not? delayed. That's right. I always forget. Well, we are really excited that next week we get to uh, come together and worship. Woo! Oh, yeah. Together. Like people. Like real life. Yeah. Like real life. Like I get to see more people than just Matt and Jen and you. It's really thrilling. It is amazing. Just... I'm just... There's electric in the air. It's gonna be it's gonna be a party. Yeah. Up in here. But still, remember we got a social distance. Yes. And stuff like that. Even while we're here, I was just thinking about youth group and us like, like if we do meet together, like we're just gonna be in a big circle and I think everybody's gonna be like, so what do we do now? Like, how do how do we interact? It's like we've, I don't know if we got those muscle memory things working anymore. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be different, but we're used to different. Yeah. So we're excited to have you back next week uh, here in this room with us. But like this morning, we hope that you're able to connect with us pretty easily there on uh, Facebook or through Boxcast or your Roku or your Apple TV or your Fire TV or whatever method that you are using, and that you've prepared that space this morning, got your communion elements ready, picked the best seat in the living room, the most comfortable one. Um, and you are uh, ready to engage with us in worship this morning. So um, thanks for being here. Hopefully some of your community groups got together this morning to, to watch with you. So yeah. It is a little bit more planning, a little bit more work, but I definitely, I definitely think it's worth it for sure. And we already have so many people logged on and watching. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I, I love it because it does notify us when people get on here, but I do actually really love it when people type in like hey good morning like, yes like the maxwells yeah. are here with you and it's just great it just makes my heart warm makes uh, your heart warm nice. it does it makes me feel like we're here together and we like each other it's nice it is amazing hey debbie clark debbie clark's watching that means jerry clark's watching <gasps> hey jerry jerry anyway hey um jerry, 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 jerry. couple things just real quick about giving we haven't you know really talked about that a whole lot over the last eight weeks that we've been doing this but we hope that that's not something you've throttled back on but that you can continuing to to worship through that whether that be online or mailing your checks in uh or your tithes and your offerings into us um that's going to continue you know as as we still are in this uh state of covid that you can you can give online. We encourage you to do that, or mail your checks in, or you can also give through text at eight. Four, if you text a dollar amount to eight four three two one, um, it's just that easy for you to easy. Uh, to give. So easy, hey, easy. hey, Jillian's watching. Hey, Jillian. I, I hope she knows that I'm doing a better job than she did. <laughs> anyway, you're talking about Jay Z in the morning, my, my my other co-host. You can't just you know. You can't, it, you, can't, you can't. I would like to know though. Even though we're going back to in-person services next week, we're not going to stop live streaming. Yeah. I mean, we, we got to. I mean, there's so, still going to be a lot of people that definitely feel more comfortable. Being who, who would like to still see some form of 
pre-service announcement show? That would be a good, that's a good question. So you let us know, and we yeah. can make this whole Jay-Z in the morning. Or, yeah, whatever it is. Okay. <laughs> but we can make I, it happen. I, I, like mean, to, I like to call you two Jillery. I think that that's, Jill- it, it's like Zachary and Jillian. Jill- Jillery. Jill. No? Don't like that? Jillery. Jill Curry. Jill- How about Jay-Z? Jay-Z. I don't know. I just like Jay Z. I mean, it's like it's a pretty I- iconic name already. I like it, but you know, it's whatever. It works for me. Uh, yeah, yep, 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 yep. But yeah, we could set up. I don't know if we could set up on stage hey. or whatever. But it would definitely be interesting having an actual audience to talk to. It would be. Yeah, it'd be fun. I think maybe we're gonna find out good. if it's fun because <laughs> we're gonna do it. I think. Yeah, it should be should be a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, prayer requests, we do want you to know we're still praying for you. Um, if you have a prayer request you want to share with us, you can do that in the comments. You can also get on our Facebook, or not our Facebook page, but on our website um, and do that confidentially if you go to fccevv.com slash prayer. It's that easy. It'll take you right to the form. You can fill it out, and it goes straight to our leadership. But we would love to pray for you in whatever way you're praying for yourself. How can we join you in that? So let us know. Yeah, and uh, as far as, like, updates and things that are coming up, we're putting out a lot of stuff on our website yeah and you can find the link in the covid19 link and app and everything like that but we have been putting a lot of it just out on facebook so if you want to know exactly what's going on get on facebook and go to the fcc evansville page and any videos or updates of what's going on and what's next that's where we'll put it so make sure and see it there i think that's that's right. what, is that what that one meant sure you can say whatever well i nice. won't say you can say whatever you want to but yeah, that's great. Just wanted to remind everybody really quick of, of what's going to be happening next week and the weeks after. Um, if you go to our website now, you can actually sign up. You can register to come to whatever service it is that you want to be at um, next week, the 24th, the 31st of May, and also June the 7th. There's a great big section right at the top of the webpage. It says click here to register, I think, or Do something it, of that so, nature. So if we want to come to church, we got to... We got to get on there and register. Do we? Do we have to do that? What happens if we just we just well? Walk I mean, in? what's happening with that? Because some people, you know, we're not going to turn people away. However, we're we are doing our best as a as a leadership to say we want to we want to adhere to the the guidelines that are out there. So we would like to keep it at a hundred people per service. So if you could just let us know that you're going to be here, that helps us to plan better uh, for how to prepare the space. I guess. Yes. So. Yeah, and that's really the, the heart behind it. You know, if you can take the time and do that, we, it would really help us out. Because, uh, I mean, if you just show up and we just happen to have more than that, you know, we want to be good citizens. We want to take care of our people the best way possible. So please, I know it might be a little a little bit more annoying, a little, little frustrating. i got to go and register. Just, just do it, please. It will really help us out. Yeah, thank and, you. And you can register for the 8 o'clock, the 9.30, or the 11. Um and don't just register yourself and then show up with seven people, but let us know how many you need. Most people have been doing that, <laughs> uh, so that's been good. Like yeah, a lot of people Bigham family, family, make sure you put ten. Uh, but our eight o'clock service is not going to be live streamed, so if you plan on staying home um, and playing it safe, then that's great. We want you to, to do that if that's what you feel you need to do. But we will not stream our eight o'clock service, just our nine thirty and eleven, um, and that's starting next week, and then. Come June 14th, we're going to go back to uh, 8.20 and 10.30, and you won't have to register for anything then. You can just come and, and be part of it. Um, if you want an easy way to get to that uh, to that registration thing, just go fccevv.com slash worship. Made it as simple as we can for you. So why do people miss Jillian? I don't understand. I feel like she I have. She's very likable. I mean. And I'm not, apparently. <laughs> you know, last week I was told that I talked to the camera like it's a person. And that was weird. I I don't think that's that's weird because I mean I mean the connection to the soul is through the eyes and people are looking through the camera and if you're not I mean, if we're just sitting here like this it's kind of right it's a little odd to me but we are getting a lot of a lot of feedback saying that that they would definitely miss this thing that we do the announcements in the morning the morning so show that's really great Jillian yeah. also said she vetoed Jillery she's the okay. name for that's all right. It's, it's Jay-Z. Jillian owes me a T-shirt, a hoodie, and a pair of blue jeans. Why is that? Well, 
she ruined a pair, or all of that. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, the you talk about the the parade, the birthday the parade, parade. Yes, I had a birthday. Parade. Oh my goodness, the birthday parade was was quite yeah, wonderful. I felt like a kindergartner. It was great because like there was a fire truck and everything, and I felt like I was I was five again too. I was like, look, a fire truck! So excited, but Jillian came out with some silly string, but. You know, sometimes it wasn't string. Sometimes when it, maybe it was a cheap silly, silly string. Straight or up food coloring in an aerosol and can. And it just like <laughs> just spit colors all over him, and yeah, it looked like it was like all. Yep. It looked like he had chicken pox. It all pretty bad. Splashed everywhere. It's crazy. Oh well. It was good. It was fun though. It was wonderful. Hey, we have just a couple minutes left, and I want to make sure that we do mention Vacation Bible School. Um, and that registration is going to be coming out soon. We did move VBS to July 10th through 6th through the 10th. Sorry, 6th through the 10th. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's in the evening this year. We'll have more details coming out later, but it's going to be 4 to 8. Uh, if you want more information, then you can email Jennifer at jennifer at fccevv.com. Um, and if you want to get involved and volunteer in any way, um, let her know. Yep, yep, yep. Also, can't forget community groups. Hopefully you're meeting with the community group now, but if not, I'm sure that there's some way that they're meeting. I know my group has kind of, we've kind of been slacking a little bit, uh, but it's crazy just figuring out some way to get back into some sort of routine. It's difficult. Yeah. Uh, so make sure and be looking out for that. If you're wanting to get connected to a com- community group in any way, email Matt and he can definitely hook you up with a group. And don't forget FCC Kids. We got our online interactive video uh, lesson for you. Jennifer worked hard to make that happen and definitely hop on there and get some Bible. Yep. It'll be posted today at 1130, the kids' Sweet. lesson. Room. Awesome. So. And tonight at 530, FCC Youth is going to be meeting on Zoom. So definitely want to join that. So middle school and high school, we'll be sending out the link on the Remind app. And I think we're going to have a little double birthday party oh, for yeah? a couple kiddos. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Birthdays However, are we fun. can do a birthday on Zoom. You know, it's not like we can share cake. It's really sad. Last time we did a birthday party, I made cookies because it's Parker's favorite. And then I ate cookies in front of him. Like by yourself? Yeah, well. Oh, because you're on Zoom. So you're yeah, really we're on Zoom. Them, like, so. It was like, look, I made huh. cookies for you. And then I just, I ate all of them. That's great. I didn't know what else to do. <laughs> hey, guys, as we wrap things up here... F- um, I just want to uh, remind everybody, had somebody mention that our 8 o'clock service, we are really encouraging those 65 and older and who may be at high risk for this virus to come to 8 o'clock. Um, so please remember that. Not required that you do that, but that service is set aside for you. So um, I'm going to leave it to you to pray real quick, and I'm going to sneak out of here. Dope. Okay. All right. Everybody, let's pray. God, thank you so much for this time. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you for just still creating a space and a way for us to meet together uh, through the internet. I pray that you will just be with us today. Speak through Matt as he opens up and delivers your word. And I pray that today we can connect to your heart a little bit more. In your name, amen.
you're singing out with me. I'm not a slave to sin, so I'm singing that you are good. I'm not a slave to sin, so I'm singing you are good. And buried with Christ to rise in your freedom, you are good. When you make a promise, Jesus, you keep it, you are good. So I'll praise your name as long as I'm breathing. You are good. I'm not a slave to sin, so I'm singing. You are good. Buried with Christ to rise in your freedom. You are good. When you make the promise, Jesus, you keep it. You are good. So I'll praise your name.
risen, he's alive. Father God, we thank you for the, the great things, God, that you do in our lives, that you, you accomplish through us, through your children, through your church, God, so that we can give you glory and honor, God, so that, that the world can know who you are. God, we celebrate your love given to us through Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross, God, the blood that he shed for us. God, and we thank you that your grace and your mercy are available to us because of, uh, of what he did, his defeat of sin and death. He took our place. And God, we have a responsibility uh, because of what he has done and because of our surrender to him, God, to, to share your name, to share the gospel to share your love. God, help us to do that. Teach us how to better do it. Um, God, how to, be, uh, how to be your disciples, how to be your people. God, we thank you for your time to worship you this morning. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Wow. I have actually missed so many of your faces. And you know, um, I, have some, I have some friends that are overseas that have never, ever been in a church service. So they don't realize the fellowship and all the things that go on that makes us a church. And, you know, one of the things that I've noticed is I see all these empty chairs. I cannot wait for next week to see them filled, to see your faces, because to me that sweet fellowship is just something that's so unique. And I would love for my friends who have never been in a church to be able to see that. Um, but before we get started today, I want to pray. So why don't we pray and we'll get started. Let's pray. And glad that you're here, by the way. Let's pray. Father, we're, um, we've experienced a lot of changes this, this the last several months. There's so many things that have been going on, some changes that, you know, we weren't expecting, and there's been some changes that really we didn't want. But, Father, I am so confident that despite our frustration about the things that we can't control, that you want to do something incredible through us. Father, you want to get our attention to show that you are at work and ready to use us. So, Father... Help us to hear your words today as, as they're spoken and to put them right into action. It is in the name of the only one who can save us from an eternity away from you, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, um, I heard of a guy that, who got this huge whiff of Olympic, and I hate to say this, maybe considering our environment, but got Olympic fever and he tried to swim across the Atlantic Ocean. Now, can you imagine that? And believe me, this is a true story. According to Dave Ramsey's blog, this unnamed man, he was from London. He attempted to swim, now get this, 3,600 miles all the way from France all the way over to the United States to New York. And, you know, I did just a little bit of research again off of that. Do you know how far it is from New York to uh, Los Angeles? If you were to drive a car, it's around 2,700 miles. It's a little short of the, the one he was going to swim. And if you were driving in a car, according to Google Maps, it would take you one day and 17 hours. And get this, if you were going to walk, it would take you 38 days. <laughs> I can't imagine being in a car for 3,600 miles, but this guy was going to swim that. Get, he, it says he made it one or two miles before lifeguards picked him up. And you know one or two miles, is if you've ever had to swim, that's actually a, a pretty big feat in itself. It's a lot of effort. But a two-mile swim is only .006. That's three zero 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 six percent of the required distance to swim the Atlantic. Although this swimmer had a lofty idea, his actual ending wasn't so good, was it? Lots of people who watch the Olympic Games get this kind of fever themselves, and they decide to embark and to um, achieve their own personal athletic goals. And while that's really, really a cool thing to decide to do, but let me make one thing crystal clear. Gold medals don't just happen. They don't. You won't wake up a week or, or so after you've been training and suddenly be capable of swimming a 100-meter free, uh, freestyle swim in 52.7 seconds or run a like 400-meter hurdles in 46.78 seconds. That's just not going to happen. It's, it's if you're going to, now let me get up, FTW, if you're going for the win, this takes years, even decades, 
of practice with hours and hours of time in the gym, in the pool, or on the court. No, if you want to win in the Olympics, you have to take extreme sacrifice and work to accomplish such a goal. And so like any sport, if you're interested in going for the win or FTW, then you'll have to, to make one quick decision. And it's a decision that's simple but necessary. Get in the game. You might even remember, does, I, dare I say this, High School Musical. You know, I'm sure there's a fan or two or whole, maybe a hundred of you that are, that are watching. But uh, they had a song that says, uh, got to get your head in the game. It's the same concept. Get in the game. Some of you may already know this, and, and some probably don't. But the Olympics that were supposed to happen this summer, that were going to happen in July, I think July 24th through August 9th, they have been changed to 2021. So if you want to get your you know, calendars ready, um, instead of it being on the 24th, it's going to be on the 23rd through August 8th. And they're still in Tokyo, Japan. Well, these Olympic events are huge. And anyone watching, either from their seats in the stand or on a couch in front of a TV, you understand the basic difference between passively watching and actively playing. That's because uh, one is not on the field, but one is on the field. And from the stands or on the couch, you're enthusiastically admiring what's, already, what's being done on the field. Although you enjoy the game, you're not in the game, are you? You're on the sidelines. And so we've all been cooped up inside, and I, I know we're, things are starting to a little bit. They're going to open up. We've already seen a little bit open up here. Not everywhere they're, they're open yet, but, but we're starting to see things open up. And so, you know, I thought it's going to be simple. What, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get in my car and I'm going to drive. It's going to only take me, in my mind, only a few minutes to get across town. And I was wrong. Have, were you out this week? Was the traffic not just like, I mean, I'm looking at faces just in here and everybody has been out and wow, the traffic, everybody came out. Um, it, what took me what I thought was going to take me 10, 15 minutes max, what took me over a half hour. So everyone is, is also beginning to make plans to go back into their work and, and, and maybe get into their summer routines. And so we'll be reconnecting with people and rekindling relationships that we've been away from. Because, you know, we've been on the sidelines, haven't we? Today, I want to get you thinking about going FTW. I want you to put hard work into going FTW, that is for the win. I want you to think about that. And so it, it reminds me of the American Olympic swim team. They, um, it comprises about 115 swimmers. One of the best well-known that you probably already know, the well-known swimmers, is Michael Phelps. And he participated, believe it or not, he participated in the last five um, Olympic competitions. And he won 23 gold, three silver, and two bronze medals. And during the uh, 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing, Phelps set seven world records, eight American records, and eight Olympic records. So if he decides to compete in this 2021 Olympics um, could you imagine him standing before the cameras and saying this? He says, our team has sacrificed a lot to get to the Olympics today. I personally spent hundreds of hours training, eating nothing but vegetables for months, going to bed early, and disciplining my body with extreme exercises just for this Olympic event. But I'm not interested in a win. As a seasoned American Olympic team member, I'm going to sit this one out. Can you imagine that? What would, what would his team, what would his team, how would they react? What would his team do? I mean, how are they, how would they, the team play? This morning, I want to talk to you about the spiritual implications of getting in the game. Jesus certainly intended for his followers not to be fans in the stands, but to be active followers. So that's going to take us to our scripture verse that I want us to read. And we're going to look into Matthew chapter 4. I'm going to read verses 18 through 22. Matthew chapter 4, 18 through 22. And here it says, 
It says, as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, um, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. Now, I notice four ideas in this passage that um, we need to embrace to be genuine followers of Jesus and to be on mission with him. So if, if, if I were to um, put it into athletic terms, I would say Jesus is asking us to what? Get into the game. Get into the game. What does that mean? What does it mean to get in the game? Four things. Get in the game. He's calling us to the field. If we look back down at verse 18, it says, As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. What I noticed in verse 18 and also in, um, again in verse 21 is this, that these four, um, four guys were, fishing, were fishermen doing what was routine, doing what was familiar, doing what was expected of them. Doesn't that sound a lot like our lives? We wake up. We get dressed, we go to work, we sit seven to eight hours, uh, come home, make dinner, do some chores and projects, or watch TV, or maybe read a book. We text or call a few people, then we go to bed. And then that routine starts over, all over again. Is there any meaning in that? And along comes Jesus, who, who calls them to something bigger, more meaningful, something eternal. Peter, Andrew, James, and John, stop sitting on the sidelines. Come get in the game. He's calling us out of the familiar. He's calling us out of our routine. He's calling us out of what's expected of us by others. He's not only calling us to the field, but he's saying, do it now. Get in the game. Do it now. Verse 19, come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they, Peter and Andrew, left their nets and followed him. Jesus called them, James and John, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Now, I've watched my brother. Uh, he has been a soccer coach for almost 10 years, and I've seen a lot of things happen I've seen him coach and I've seen him teach really young kids. And you know, if you've ever seen them play on the field, one going one direction, one going the other, and they, sometimes they don't know what they're doing. But can you imagine um, this? It says um, he, if, when he calls out a player to get on the field, he wants them to do it now. He'd be disgusted or frustrated if they said things like this. Um, may, maybe later. No, no, I, I don't want to. It's not any fun. I don't really know what to do. Or let me finish what I'm doing first. Or if my friends decide to get on the field, then, then I'll do it. Or only if, if it's really easy and I don't get hurt. Or only if you don't expect anything out of me. That is all crazy talk to a coach. And it seems to me Jesus hears these same kinds of excuses from us. Jesus has called you and me off the bench, and he expects it now. If we respond favorably, it seems rather obvious, but I'm going to say it anyway. If, if we get on the field, we better understand the goal of the game. We better understand what a win is. Get in the game, understand the goal. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. Jesus said it clearly. Follow me, fish for people. In other words, what's a win? Reproducing discipleship. 
A win uh, is when a disciple reproduces a disciple who reproduces another disciple and so on. Every Christian should see themselves as a disciple maker rather than just a participant who attends church or a small group. That is passive participation, not active. So, and think of it like this. Think of the military. You know, there are are a lot of different jobs that make our military or any military very strong. There are, of course, all of its leaders like the generals, the lieutenants, um, the, the sergeants. But there's also doctors, medics, uh, mechanics, pilots, sailors, nurses, privates, lawyers, strategists, um, electricians, cooks, explosives experts, computer technicians, recruiters, janitors, chaplains, and musicians. Each one of them have their different skills that helps the military operate. But every one of them learns how to use a rifle. In fact... They're all riflemen. And no matter your skill nor your rank, you're a rifleman in the military. A person might be a medic or a five-star general, but everyone is skilled at using a rifle. And if you are in this audience and claim Jesus as the Lord of your heart, then it's expected that you are on mission with Jesus and you're a disciple maker too. You're a disciple maker if you're a stay-at-home mom. You're a disciple maker if you're a CEO. You're a disciple maker if you're a janitor. You're a disciple maker if you're a manager. You're a disciple maker if you're a librarian, a banker, a street cleaner, or preacher because Christians are disciple makers. And it works something like this. Let's say you're like um, a small group leader, for example, who begins praying. You're praying for God to reveal a friend or two who is teachable or who, who's engaged uh, learning more scripture and interested in obeying God, something like that. Then this leader takes these one or two interested people and makes a reproducing disciple out of him or her. In turn, that person who understands reproducing discipleship makes one or two reproducing disciples out of his peer group then that peer makes one or two disciple, reproducing disciples out of that friend group. We call that reproducing discipleship. And if you were, if you were able recently to see some of the uh, videos that I have posted this week uh, on YouTube from our church, then you know I called it a little, it's just slightly different. It's being a disciple worth reproducing. And so if Jesus has called all Christians to get on the field to do it now and to understand the goal, what the goal is, he has one last request. Get in the game, leave your comfort zone. Verse 20, at once they left their nets and followed him. And immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. You can't just stay in the huddle. Verses 20 and 22 reveals the risk and the gutsiness that these guys took. Fishing was their way of life, and it was very predictable and comfortable. Leaving your family is certainly going to be, in unknown places, is going to be scary. It requires courage. And when we go fishing for people to draw them near Jesus, it requires leaving our comfort zone. And the amazing thing that happens is that we experience a dependence on the Holy Spirit who will equip and strengthen us beyond our natural abilities. And and I recall a story um, that happened to me. It was someone had called me up. It was an international student had called me up and said, hey, can you meet me at Starbucks? This is the Starbucks on First Avenue. And I remember going and I I just thought it was just going to be coffee. It was going to be a short thing. And then somewhere in our conversation, he, uh, he didn't know this, but I had been praying for him, but somewhere in our conversation, um, he asked me why I became a Christian, and I remember thinking, "Oh man, wow! I didn't, I didn't expect that." Now, of course, I've been praying; I just didn't expect it to happen right there. But I was very happy to do that, and I remember thinking after I, you know, I, I told him what my life was like before I met God, and how, how you know, it, it, I, I followed basically myself. I was pretty selfish, and how when when God 
when, when I met, encountered Jesus, basically, he, he changed that for me, and he changed it radically. And I began to then study scripture, and I began to, to, to pray and to begin to do all those things. And I just remember the change that he made in me. And I remember having a conversation, was, it was probably a half hour, maybe even an hour. And I remember thinking afterwards, wow, where did I get all those words? There were things I said that I wasn't expecting, that um, I could just tell that God was a part of that. Because I believe that the Holy Spirit was trying to equip me and give me the words to say. And I think that God transforms us when we step out in faith. And that's what he wants to do for us. He wants us to be able to tell our story and his story and why it radically changed us. It's time to get in the game. Who wants to score? It's time to get in the game. Who has the guts. It's time to get in the game. Who's ready to play? We got to get on the team, get on the field, and get in the zone. No sideliners, no sitting in the stands, no critiquing on the couch, no chilling passively, and no halfway, no halftime, no part-time. We're, we're being called to move, to engage all in all or nothing, obey or get out of the way. And you know, things are starting to open up. We're, you can all start to see that. And I think we're ready to start sharing our story and his story and how he came into our life. We're going to be headed to work getting around people. So it's time to you know what? To get in the game. Are you going to sit on the sidelines? Are you going to play? Let's pray. Father, we uh, have just heard your words and we see what you did in the disciples' lives. And Father, you want to do that in ours. You are ready. We are ready. And Father, I just want to lift up our body here and ask that you will um, help us and, and encourage us and give us not only the boldness to, to share with other people about what you've done. You've radically changed us but also be able to, to reach out and touch people's lives with just the, the, the great salvation that you have for them. They're not going to know unless we share. And, uh, and, Father, I'm ready to do that. I know I've been inside for so long. Now I have had a chance to think of a lot of things. But one thing I want to do and I want for our, our church body is that we go out and we share like we've not shared before and share with love and compassion and caring and showing how you have transformed our lives. We want to be significant in the kingdom and we want to do it right now, Father. We just ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus talked about counting the cost of discipleship. As we come to this time of communion, I can't help but think of all of those moments where he drew a line in the sand for people and said, if you want to follow me, here's the step you need to take. And people would hear it and they'd walk away. Think about how he would have massive crowds of people and he would preach a sermon and, and it'd be too much. And just the masses would just leave. There's a cost to following him. Because there's a cost there was to be him. Just think about the cost that he had to count. Just think about him in Gethsemane. Praying that there be any other way, any other way that cup you take from him. But he still counted the cost and that cost was his life. And he died for you and for me. And his blood was shed and his body was broken. Right now we come to this time of communion where we take the juice, we take the bread, and we remember and celebrate his sacrifice and see his life as the model of what it is to count the cost because there is a cost for you and for me. Dietrich Bonhoeffer says that when Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. So I know you've had to count the cost too. 
but let's look to Christ and his sacrifice during this time of communion. Father, thank you for sending your son. Thank you that he counted the cost and he was willing to make the trek up that hill. He was willing to be misrepresented, lied about, beaten, and bruised and broken and nailed to a cross. All so that you could redeem us. Also that he could be the firstborn of many brothers and sisters. Also that we could have the the, the dwelling of the Holy Spirit inside of us, guiding us and making it to where we can commune and be in a relationship with you once again. Thank you for your love. Thank you for Jesus. Amen. I've carried a burden too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go. I see.
foes are many They rise against me But I will hold my ground I will not fear the war I will not fear the storm My help is on the way My help is on the way
We thank you that you you fight for us, God. That you you uh, you welcome us to you with with open arms, and God, that you have given us uh, a hope, God, that will never fade. That hope that is in you, and God, I pray that as we as we go about our week, God, that you would help us to take seriously this responsibility that you have given us of, of sharing uh, sharing what you have done for us, sharing the message uh, of Jesus Christ and His love. God, I pray you continue to shower us with your grace and your mercy. God, as we continue to, to navigate these times, God, that you would give us peace and you would ease our minds. And God, you'd be with us next week as we, as we come back together as your church in this room. God, gather together to worship you. God, I pray you'd be with those who are afflicted and, uh, and uh, dealing with this disease firsthand. Those who are helping fight it on the front lines, God, and those who are making decisions for our for our community, for our government, God, and how we are to, to move forward. Um, God, may we always look to you. May we always know, God, that you are in control. God, that nothing can stop you and your plan. So help us, God, to trust in that, to have hope in you always. We thank you for a time to worship you this morning, to come together as your church, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. <laughs>